So we're going to talk about language models. What is a language model? So say we have some fine vocabulary, for example, the, of, shovel, car, smith, one, all, many, many words, right? We have an infinite set of strings that we can form from this vocabulary. So we can say, if I use uh, the stop as a symbol of the end of a sentence, for example, I can have the, just the word the, I can have another string that is a, and then the end, or it goes up, and then the end, I can have another string that's the plane goes up, and then the end, I can have another string that says anytime uh, Gene joins the group, the rate goes up, and then end the sentence there. There's the, the strings are infinite. There's infinite lengths, and there there are many many possible combinations of words. Now, <clears throat> now let's let's what is the what is the language model? First, we have to think of what is a model. A model is a simplification of how I think the world works. Basically, I will try to create some sort of rule or some sort of, of uh, equation that tells me how the world works. For example, a model for, um, for begging for money is that the, the more I beg, the more I'll get, for example. That's a little model. Is if I beg X, I will get Y. If I get if I beg x plus 1, I will get y plus 1 money, right? That would be a simple model, a simplification of how I think the world works. In the world of language, the idea here is that if we have a lot of English language, uh, in our case, it'll be written English language, right? Say Wikipedia or all of the New York Times or, you know, all of Twitter. If I have a lot of English examples, I should be able to learn the syntax. What I want specifically is to learn a probability distribution such that for all possible strings in the language that I will call x, for all possible strings x in the language, right, the probability of each one of those strings, uh, of the probability of all the combination of all those strings is going to be uh, 1. Okay. Uh, so here are some probabilities that I might consider. I don't know, for example, perhaps in my training, the probability of the and the end of a sentence is 10 to the negative 12th. The probability of the plane goes up and then the end of a sentence is 10 to the negative 11th, because it's perhaps more common than ending a sentence in the word the. Uh, the probability of goes up and then the end of a sentence, that's 10 to the negative 8th, for example, because a lot of sentences end in go, goes up, right? more sentences end and go up, therefore the probability is bigger than, say, sentences that end in the word the, where the probability is smaller. So if I have a, pro a, a probability model of all these sentences, then I know something about the language. I know how likely a sentence is to appear in the, in the language. This is extremely useful for disciplines such as speech recognition, where the signal is very noisy and you want to know whether, w what is the most probable thing that the person might have said, given what you have. Same thing for handwriting recognition. They're very useful for machine translation, for named entity recognition, and for parsing. So in general, this is very useful for many, many problems in natural language processing. So let's try to see how can we compute the probability of these sentences. Say we have n training sentences, you know, 7 million training sentences, however many. For each sentence, you have a set of words from word 1 to word n. And a count, that's the little c here, a count of, uh, of that sentence occurring, so the sequence of words, right? So this count here is how many times you've seen the sentence in the n number of sentences, okay? Now, so I can estimate the probability right, this is the maximum likelihood estimate, I can estimate this probability, the probability of the sentence, all the words of the sentence, right, so the probability of all these words as follows. It can be the count of that sentence, so how many times I've seen that sentence in the corpus, divided by the total number of sentences. That's a simple probability, right? How many times does um, the phone rings appears in the, in the corpus? Well, I will count how many times I see the phone rings divided by how many sentences were there. 
Now, let's think of all possible sentences that you could form here, right? So if the size of the vocabulary is 20,000, then for two word sentences, those are called bigrams, we have 20,000 square, that's 400 million possible combinations of words here. If I consider sentence of length three, I will have eight trillion. If I consider sentence of length four, I will have 10 to the 17 um, possible combinations. That's the order of 10 to the 7, 17. And we know that it's inf the sentence can be of infinite length, right? So that is a lot of combinations to start training the probability and counting in the sentence. So the idea is, can we simplify this? To simplify this, we first have to revisit something uh, in probabilities called Markov processes. So if you have a sequence of random variables, right, so x1 to xn, this can be words, right? Each variable can, be, can have uh, many words. Now, each random variable can take in any value in a finite set v. So for our case, will be uh, x1 can be any word, x2 can be any other word, and so on and so forth, and x can, n can be any word. So the goal would be to model the probability that the first word is something, the second word is something else, and so on and so forth until the last word. So for example, the probability, the, the, the goal would be to model uh, if the phrase is, if the sentence is, the phone rings, we want to find a probability such that the first value takes the, the second value takes phone, and then the last value takes rings. Okay, so the goal is to model this probability, this, this probability distribution of any number of variables taking any of the values possible, any words. Okay, now we know that the probability is a um, the probability of many events occurring together is basically the probability of the first event times the probability from the second event on right and the probability of the second event given of the uh, I'm sorry the probability of the first event times the probability of all subsequent events given the events up to that point <clears throat> this is called the chain rule you can verify this. Now, computing this probability n times, right, is just impossible. It's intractable. It's, again, it's all these possible combinations. Why don't we simplify this and say the following? I'm going to say that the probability of seeing a word depends only on the word that just happened. So, for example, if I say, um, uh, if I say, uh, new. Perhaps the next word is going to be York, right? If I if you see new with capital N, and then perhaps the next word is going to be York. It's very likely that new and York happen together. Now, if I see if I say Jersey, perhaps Shore, it's it's a likely word that comes after that, right? Uh, if I say uh, uh, lightning, perhaps bolt, is a word that comes after that. It's more likely, right? So if I say a word, I can have the next, the next word can be kind of predicted in many cases, right? So, um, so that is what's called a bigram model. The intuition here is the same intuition that you have, say, for example, for weather. What's the weather going to be in one minute? Well, probably the same weather that is right now. So I will base my predictions for the near future in my predictions that I know from, you know, the right now, or I will base my predictions for right now in the near past. But I don't need to know the whole entirety of the day, how's the day been, to predict the next minute, right? So there are some events, in some places in life, where you can predict what's going to happen just by knowing what just happened before, okay? If we do that, then we will say that uh, this value here only depends on the value that came before it, and the rest, the rest of the history is r irrelevant. So we would, we would call, this would become the equation, right? Then this would become 
from i equals 2 to n of the probability of x sub i given the previous probability. And this is much more tractable, much more tractable. Now, like I said, you know, new and then York, those words might, might one, the next word might depend on the previous one, right? Or, um, uh, uh, or Jersey and Shore, right? Or watching and then TV, perhaps that's the next word, right? However, there are many words in which it might be a lot more difficult to, um, to predict. For example, New York, it could be instead of New and York, it could be New Computer, right? There are, many, there are many cases. So what if, instead of considering just the previous word, what if we were to consider the two previous words? It's, it's a little improvement here, but it's not as, intract, as intractable as this probability. So. I'm going to say the probability of a sequence of words is going to be equal to the probability of the first word times the probability of the second word given the first word, and then times the probability of each subsequent word given the previous two words. Take a moment to look at that and find, find that that's the case. Now, this, this I can predict with much more accuracy because if I say um, uh, uh, in new York is much more likely than in new computer, right? So the prediction there is much it's, it's much better. So if I say bread and, and then you say butter, right? Bread and butter. It's a, it's a very predictable word that comes after that. So if I know the previous two words, I perhaps can predict with much more accuracy the word that's coming next, okay? My phone rings, right? That, that can be a word. Um, so... By knowing a little bit more of the history, I don't go into an intractable problem, yet I probably increase my prediction power. Okay? Now, this equation here can be simplified a bit by saying that i starts in 1, goes to n, of all the probabilities of the word i given the previous two words. Now, the problem is that at the beginning of the sentence, we don't have any previous two words. So we will just say that x0 and x1, so the first two words, are a star, where the star is a special start symbol. Okay? And, and, and we will see how to use this uh, in, in the future. But this is basically the language model problem. Now, I would like the length of the sequences to be a random variable, so I want them to vary, right? Now, I want to know when the sentence ends, so I will define an x of n equals stop, where stop is a special symbol. It can be, you know, squigglies or, or a stop between braces, whatever you want to, something that's not going to be confused with a word, but it's a stop symbol, okay? And then we use the Markov processes as before, where the last, where the last uh, uh, x, xn, it's going to be the symbol stop. And that can, that can model the end of a sentence. If I don't do that, then I can go into, uh, I, I can model, you know, any sequence of words regardless of sentence boundaries, and that might not be uh, correct. So off this notion comes the trigram language model. This is modeling three words. So one word depending on the previous two. That's a trigram model. If you model one word depending on the previous one, that's a bigram model, two words. We, we want to model sets of three words. So what's the next word given the previous two? What we need is a finite set V of vocabulary, right? So these are sets of unique words in my, in, in my English that I've uh, seen. Then we need a parameter Q of the third word given the previous two words for for basically, uh, this is what this is saying, for each trigram U, V, and W, right? So the phone rings, okay? I want to model the probability of rings given the and phone. Now, this word here can be any word in the vocabulary, in the vocabulary plus the word stop. These words here can be any word in the vocabulary but not stop because these are... These, these are history. They will never end the sentence. These are uh, all the words in the vocabulary plus the star symbol, special symbol, when, when you know, 
we want to start a sentence. That's formally defining this. Now for any sentence comprised of a sequence of words, um, where the last one is the special stop symbol, the probability of the sentence under the trigram language model is going to be the product of all these estimates of the probability of a word given the previous two words. Okay? Now, how do we get this estimate? So, so let's, let's look at it just very quickly. For the sentence, I am Sam, I would have the probability of I am Sam stop, and that is the probability of I given nothing before it, no two words preceding, the probability of am given that there, there's the beginning of a sentence and the word I, the probability, the estimate for Sam given the words I am, the probability of stop, finishing the sentence, given that the previous two words were am and sam. That would be how you compute the probability. Now, the, the thing that we wanted to think about now is how do we estimate this Q? And this Q we're going to use what's called the maximum likelihood estimate. And it's basically the counts. We're going to estimate how many times do these three words occur divided by how many times the previous words occur, right? So for example, in New York, I want to determine the, the probability of, of uh, York coming after in a new, right? So in New York, right? So I will count how many times in New York happens in the text divided by how many times in new happens in the text. So out of all of the occurrences of in New, in New Haven, in New Hampshire, in New, um, in New Amsterdam, all the, all the occurrences of in New, how many of those are in New York? That is the conditional probability of York happenings, happening after in and New. Okay, this is how we're going to estimate these probabilities. So as an exercise, you want to compute trigram probabilities for this text. So, for example, compute the probability of, um, for example, compute the following probability, right? Compute the probability of the given we and r based on this text, okay? Given we and r. We will have to count here we'll have to count, for example, uh, oops, this is good, we'll count, here's one, we are the, here's another one, we are the, here's another one, we are the, uh, and I believe that's it, right? Those are all the occurrences of we are the. Whoops, my bad. Whoops. Oh, there. Okay, so this is three times we find the word we are the, right? And then divided by how many times we see we are. So this is three times we are the, and how many times do, do we find we are? One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so it's five times we find the string we are, and three of those five times are followed by uh, the word the. So this will be the probability here would be basically 3 over 5. Okay, this is how we get the, the probabilities for these trigrams. And this is how we estimate these probabilities.